Thank you, Jesus. Isn't he wonderful? He is so wonderful. I've been thinking back several times to uh, Monday night's uh, prayer meeting turned into a testimony about how many things that God has done for us. God is faithful. Yes, he is. God is faithful, and he, he wants his people to be faithful. And um, Sunday when we were talking about humility and pride and stuff, we got in on the, the part of um, do we ask God for things? Or are we self-made people and we think that all that we accomplish are in, is in ourselves? That's pride. But humility is, is when you need God to do things for you. And when you acknowledge when God does things for you. And I'm just so thankful for Him. And this first song says, I need thee. Who needs Jesus tonight? I do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And I need the to him and I need the
You may be seated. We're going to ask the ushers to come forward. We're going to receive tonight's offering. The um, reason why I had you to be seated is we have a, uh, a couple that has never been here before as a couple, a married couple, all the way from Gatlinburg. If brother and sister Carr would stand up, let's give the latest married couples in the church a good hand clap. Yeah, brother, brother Hunt said you could be embarrassed. So, uh, but anyway, if you have your, your offering tonight, dig deep. The Lord will bless you. All of these uh, going to uh, maintain the efforts around here to keep the lights on and to uh, invest in the kingdom of God. But Brother Becker's getting ready to come. He's going to give us a special, but let us pray. Lord Jesus, we ask you, Lord, to bless this offering. Bless each and every person that has to give and those who don't alike, Lord Jesus. But we ask a special blessing tonight on those, Lord Jesus, that would reach deep, Lord, and give sacrificially, Lord, for the kingdom of God, Lord. We ask that everything that we do may be pleasing to you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Y'all worship with Brother Becker as he sings. bit get situated. the king is Here he comes. 
Are you ready? He's coming. Praise the Lord. He is coming. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Before we dismiss our youth, I was going to, when they were singing that song, I was thinking about youth camp, Sister uh, Edmerson, about what you heard with your own ears. Wasn't that powerful? Uh, there was a lady that was sitting beside her, got in the Holy Ghost, and, and was speaking in tongues. And she was sitting there, and the lady was saying in Spanish, and the lady didn't speak Spanish, but the lady was saying, yes, I am coming. Yes, I am coming. And Sister Emerson said, boy, that, that just, was, just blew my mind because the lady didn't know Spanish. Praise the Lord. But how many knows he is coming? He is coming. Hallelujah. I preached a message one time, ready or not, here I come. And I believe he is coming. The youth can be dismissed tonight. Amen. In the children's church. And, and, and also the uh, right after church, Sister uh, Brenda needs to meet anybody that's interested in working in the nursery class and who is working in nursery class. She wants to line up some help for the nursery class. So right after church, meet her right around the front. Sister uh, Abbott has a testimony. Go ahead, sis. I need to praise my God again. Amen. Praise God. Um, when we got done, they were dropping our house to $200. Praise God. Hallelujah. They are dropping our, we, we owed $25 to $20 years. Um, we are paying July's my Lord, God's good. Um, just, he is blessing us over and over and over again. I mean, just Wednesday night, I gave that testimony. Praise God. And here he is blessing us again. And I just want to thank him, and I wanted to share that all with you. Amen. That he loves me, and he is just blessing us. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, he is. Amen. God is good. Let's give him a real good hand clap. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Brother Abbott, I guess, had to step out a minute, but I, he, he called me yesterday testifying to me. He said, Brother, I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't, I can't quit speaking in tongues. Hallelujah. I tell you, I, said, I know what's wrong with you. The Holy Ghost is all over you. Praise God. God is good to us tonight. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to... Um, I'm going to jump in the Word of God tonight, but I want Sister Turner, she's going to help me read my text for me tonight. It's kind of a lengthy reading, and my voice is trying to uh, crackle again tonight, but I want her to help me read that, and then we're going to, I'll preach to you a little bit. You can just be seated, let her read it on this Bible study night, but follow along with us in Judges chapter 7. It'll be on the board as well, and she's going to go through uh, about verse 22. Go ahead, Sister, 9 through 22. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Arise, get thee down unto the host, for I have delivered it into thine hand. But if thou fear to go down, go thou with Phura, thy servant, down to the host. And thou shalt hear what they say, and afterwards shall thine hands be strengthened to go down unto the host. Then when he down with Phura, his servant unto the outside of the armed men that were in the host, and the Midianites and the Amalekites and all the children of the east, lay along in the valley like grasshoppers for multitude. And their camels were without number, as the sand by the seaside for multitude. And when Gideon was come, behold, there was a man that told a dream unto his fellow and said, Behold, I dreamed a dream, and lo, a cake of barley bread tumbled into the midst of Midian, and came unto a tent, and smote it that it fell and overturned it that the tent lay along. And his fellow answered and said, This is nothing else save the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. For into his hand hath God delivered Midian and all the host. And it was so, when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof, 
that he worshipped and returned into the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the three hundred men into three companies, and he put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps within the pitchers. And he said unto them, Look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with a trumpet, I and all that are with me, then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch. And they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets, and brake the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets, and brake the pitchers, and held the lamps in their left hands, and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they stood every man in his place round about the camp. And all the host ran and cried and fled. And the three hundred blew the trumpets, and the Lord set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Beth Sheeta, to Zariath, and to the border of Abelamola unto Tabith. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Turner. So, what a battle. You know, you, you re I read that t uh, this week and I got to thinking about the battle. Uh, wouldn't it be pretty awesome to be able to win a battle like that in your life? About And, and just to be able to do uh, physical things, not even have to uh, hurt yourself. It's just going to be something simple, but the battle's going to be won. Wouldn't it be awesome to be able to do that? And I thought again, I can. If I'm willing to listen to what God tells me to do. Gideon had, a, I think, probably one of the biggest, hardest things for Gideon doing this whole battle was to listen when God said do something. Because a lot of times, I think we can, we physically probably can, can whip a bear sometimes and probably we know how to take out big uh, giants. But when it gets to the part of listening to what God wants us to do, then we kind of get, it's hard to do because uh, the flesh don't like to listen to the spirit a lot of times. But I want to preach tonight. And this past week, Monday night, we had a very good prayer meeting, I thought. And we, I began to listen to testimonies throughout the church. And if you miss on Monday night prayer meeting, you're missing the, the best service of the week, in my opinion, is the best service of the week is on Monday night. But it's prayer. I think prayer is needed beyond choir practice. Prayer meetings are needed beyond preaching. I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. Because prayer meeting is what makes us and breaks us. It, it keeps us strong and it keeps us humble. But anyway, it was one of the a good prayer meeting. We become, it was a, more of a testimony time. And I began to listen to people testify. And so after, I, after that Monday night meeting, I began to pray. And yesterday, God began to lean me on to a message. And I said, but God, uh, I don't really have to preach that message because Everybody in the church is doing well. We have great givers. We have people that, that are, are, are testifying how God is blessing because they gave and God turns around and gives it back. But tonight I want to preach just a little while tonight, if I can, on trusting God enough to tithe. Trusting God enough to tithe. And now you say, Brother Hunt, you, you're preaching money again. Well, uh, just bear with me a little bit because I want to show you a little bit of things that God has kind of shared with my life today and heart through today and yesterday. I, I, feel, I feel sometimes we trust God to heal us. We trust God that's going to take care of us. But a lot of times, if we're not careful, we can't trust God to tithe. And I think because we, we're afraid if I give it, I may need it. And I'm, I'm going to get into that a little bit. But I, I, I went through and looked at a, a bunch of different kinds of uh, sayings today. And I read, I read a lot of stories today about, about people, how God blessed them, how God gave to them after they gave. And, and I want to show you uh, one here that, that stood out to me. And I've got two or three I'm going to read today. But here it says that... Uh, this, this leader is in a leadership magazine. It says, while I was preaching on a, one Sunday... An elderly woman, which name was Mary, she fainted and she struck her head at the end of the pew and immediately e the EMT con in the congregation, he called an ambulance and as they strapped her to the stretcher and got, got her ready, uh, they headed out the door and Mary began to regain conscience and she comes to and she motioned for her daughter to come near and everybody thought, you know, in their mind, she's going she's gonna to have this great final word she's going to say. But the daughter leaned over and says, yeah, what, what you need? And put her ear close to her mouth. And her mom says, uh, my offering is in my purse. 
Make sure you give it today. And I, that stood out to me. So with that being said, I want to preach this thought tonight entitled, Trusting God Enough to Tithe. Tithing, I believe, is a principle of learning to lean on God. Uh, because it, it, we have to learn to lean on him. It, when we give toward the principles, according to the principles of, of the Bible, we can learn and we lean on God and then things that happen. And I was thinking about two other ladies that used to go to our church here and one was named Sister Cook. And some of you may not remember Sister Cook, but Sister Cook was, was one of our top tithers of the church. She loved to give to missions and she didn't ever miss putting on that check missions when she gave her tithes. But Sister Cook had a lot of health problems. She was in the hospital a whole lot. And I would go visit Sister Cook and, and I would be in, in her uh, room and not feeling well at all. And she would tell her sister Dugan, she says, Sister Dugan, get my purse. I've got to give my tithes when Brother Hunt's here at the hospital. Now, I felt kind of bad. I said, I didn't come to get your tithes. I, I come to pray for you. She said, yeah, but my tithes are due and I've got to pay them. And also her sister, which is Sister Dugan, most of you know her, some of you don't know her. She is an assistant living, Alzheimer's assistant living right now. She forgets a lot of things. But one of the things she does not forget is she tells her sister, make sure you mail my tithes to the church. The reason I say that because they, they put principles in their life a long time ago. And I want you to know these ladies, I know very personally, God blessed them all through the years of their life. And, and God took care of them and God supplied when it really wasn't, uh, uh, you didn't, couldn't figure a way out that God was gonna do it. But they realized if I can just give what God I owe, God will take care of me. There, there was a priest one time, he asked uh, one of the saints in the, in the church, he says, I want you to, uh, to, to start being our financial chairman of our church. And the man was a manager of a grain elevator and he agreed on, on the conditions. He said, but it's gonna be two conditions that I do this. He says that no report will be due until the end of the year and no one would ask any question during the year, how is the church's money going? And so they agreed and at the end of the year, they made this, his report. But at the end of the year, they had paid the church off, which was $200,000 debt. They had paid it off. He had redecorated the church. He had sent $1,000 to mission. He had $5,000 in the bank. And the first thing the preacher asked says, well, how in the world did you do this? And he said, well, he says, um, all the congregation was bringing their, their, their grain to my elevator. He said, but what I did, he says, in, in my business, I simply withheld 10% of their grain. And guess what? None of them noticed they was missing 10%. So we paid the church off. If you pay your 10%, you're not really gonna miss it if you do it from the heart. Somebody ought to say amen on that, praise the Lord. Oh my goodness, but I, these are good stories I read today. But I wanna look at a, a steward. How many knows you're a steward of what God has given you? Whatever you've got today, you're a steward. Now you say you don't have a whole lot, well God probably figures you can't handle a whole lot right now. I'd like to try, how about you guys? But the steward definition is this, someone who is responsible for knowing or, or responsible of another man's property. That's a steward guy. Now, we, we are such, I believe right now, we're in such a key position as stewards in our lives as we are today. I believe we, we've got it right, we're right in the middle of something that God is doing. And I think every one of us are blessed is here tonight. You've got a right to be blessed. You've, God has given you things and he's, he's trusting you to take care of it. But hear me tonight, church, when God of heaven when he came down and he brought you and I into this earth and he created us as a being, you know what he done? He placed us in this world and he, he placed us here, not as an owner, but as someone who can be a steward, as such uh, uh, to be entrusted for a season. This, this is not forever, by the way. And he's just putting us here for a, a season to entrust with different things in our lives. It's, it's various things. We can name them all night long, but, but, but the sole property of, of of what we have tonight still actually belongs to him. It's really, it's not ours. Guess what? We, uh, we should never try to put Jesus out of it and say, I did this all by myself because nothing that you got today, your home you live in, you didn't get all by yourself. It belongs to God. If we learn, if we learn everything we do belongs to God, Guess what? This church belongs to God. That, that car you drove to church tonight belongs to God. That house you live in belongs to God. That place you work at belongs to God. Guess what? I don't know about you, but I don't want to take responsibility of putting my name on it. 
But I want to say it belongs to God because if it belongs to him, but he makes us a steward over these things. Now, uh, you know, you, you preach a message and you wish your whole church was here, but I, I've been here 12 years and I never had the whole church here at one time. So I know that doesn't happen. It just does not happen. But I believe when God puts a word out, it goes forth. But I'm gonna tell you, if God gives you a new car and if you don't take care of it, why would he give you another one? If he gives you a house and you don't clean that, that house and you don't take care of it, why should he give you anything better? I think he makes us a steward over things. Oh boy, I could preach there a while. It's not in my notes, but I could. But, but we're... we're we are not our own tonight, but we're bought with a price. None of us here are our own, but, but such likewise, I believe God leaves us these things for us to enjoy. We can enjoy the things of life, but, but, but I believe that, that one of the, the things that we got to really realize that, that God's given us, the, I believe the finances is the kind of the health of this area of stewardship in our lives. It's kind of uh, uh, the attitude that we have concerning the giving to the work of God. And we got to carry the right attitude. If you don't have the right attitude when you give your tithes, you're probably not going to be blessed with it. But given with the right attitude, God will bless you. Notice, notice now tonight when I, when I said attitude toward giving, it's not the amount or, of the giving that we give, but it's the attitude we have. It's the attitude we have according to how God's going to bring back this great big blessing to our lives. Uh, notice, it is, it, is, it is the attitude as well, but it's not, I'm gonna give 5,000 and she gives five. I'll be honest with you, if, if the $5 she gives is a great attitude, she's gonna be blessed more than you are that gave 5,000. So we have to be really careful how we, our attitude gives. The enemy comes in and he says this, he says, well, uh, it's the amount, but I, I disagree. It's not the amount. Even though uh, uh, when we give the right according to God's word, it, the amount equals up if it's right, amen? And there's times in our lives when God blesses us, but by putting us in the place of the giver. Now, now, now listen, sometimes God blesses us and we're able to give, right? But sometimes he turns it around and, and he makes us the receiver. Now, I like to receive, how about you? But I believe if we give, we shall receive. If you give to God's kingdom, it's a guarantee to come back to you if you give it with the right attitude. It's not the amount, again, but it's the attitude that's important. Deuteronomy 16, 17 says, Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he hath given thee. Now the need, or I would say the need or use of finances can be one of the most, I believe, probably the... Uh, uh, divisive issue that can be within a church because when you start preaching and, and about giving and teaching about money, people get uncomfortable because you know why? I worked hard for what I got and I, 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 I've, I took this in. But tonight, church, I want to tell you, we got to realize that that I'm thankful that I have the right attitude when I do come to church and I do lay my last $2 or my last $10 in the offering plate and, and, um, and to me, that's the way I am. If I've got it in my pocket, it belongs to God anyway. That's me. And um, I never, my wife don't give me much cash because she knows I'm gonna just put it all right in the offering plate, but not that ain't the reason, but she knows she, I'll spend it. If I don't spend it here, I'll spend it somewhere else too. So, we got to keep the right attitude, and many of you have, uh, when it comes to this area of the body of believers, I believe you do have the right attitude. I think we have a good church of, of givers that has the right attitude. I found some quotes today I think that would be interesting for you to hear, and all of these are, these are not my quotes. These are some that I, I pulled off the, of the internet, but here, one of them is, God judges what we give by what we keep. Y'all write that down. Y'all might want to study that out later. But he judges what we give by what we keep. And that was uh, G. Muller was who wrote that. And he, this one, this one says, I have tried to keep things in my hands and I lost them all. But what I have given to God, in God's hands, I still possess. And that's Martin Luther. Then there's another man by the name of J.D. Rockefeller. He said it like this. I never would have been able to tithe the first million dollars I've ever made if I had not tied my first salary, which was a dollar and 50 cents a week. Wow, that's, that's pretty interesting. This next guy, y'all probably know pretty well. When it comes to giving, some people will stop at nothing. And that was Jimmy Carter. This next writer is unknown, but he said, the trouble is that too many people are spending money they haven't yet earned for things they don't need to impress people they don't like. 
Uh, that, that, that one, I might all read it again so y'all can write it down. The trouble is that too many people are spending money they haven't yet earned for things they don't need to impress people they don't like. And then the next one says this by Peter Marshall, giving according to your income, lest God makes your income according to your giving. Wow. Now, how would, your, how would your income be if it was according to your giving today? Ooh, that, that's something to think about, isn't it? Now, Mother Teresa said it like this. If you give what you do not need, it isn't given. Wow. One last quote, okay? This is from, uh, I think you pronounced her name, Odofi uh, Monod or something like that. But she says this. This is no portion of, there is no portion of, of our time that is our time. And the rest is God's. There is no portion of money that is our money and the rest is God's money. It is all his. He made it all. He gives it all and he has simply trusted it to us for his service. A servant has two purses, the master's and his own, but we only have one. And that was by her. But that's enough quotes tonight. But let's get right into the word of God for a few minutes. And let's, let's talk about the principles of tithing, of how you're blessed. And, and we've heard testimonies this past Monday night. It was amazing of people, how they was testifying, of how they did such and such. And God turns around and does this and that. And, and I believe that's what God's planning is for us to give. And he reigns it back on us. But once again, I believe we're going to use the story of getting that Sister Turner read tonight as a roadmap to speak and to learn about what God is asking for us and how important it is in all areas of stewardship in our lives. It doesn't matter if it's just the giving or if it's what God has given us outside the church, how we're taking care of it. But we, we must remember that stewardship comes down to trust and lordship. And in other words, uh, I believe in, in, in other area of our life we need to practice is trust and lordship and of our finances that we, we deal with every day. And, and I'm not really a finance guru, but uh, my wife takes care of all the finances and I will say it like this. If you and your wife have two different checking accounts, you're probably gonna have a bad marriage. Well, that's quiet. We must have too many in here that's, that's got different checking accounts. You should, you should be one. When you get married, you should have one checking account. You should put your money together. You should put things together. One of y'all should take care of the bills. And one of y'all, you say, brother, why are you saying Because I'm here to tell you, it ain't worth fighting over. Church pays me. I go straight to Sister Hunt. Here you go. Pay the bills. Take care of it. It's, it's yours. And you say, brother, I don't know about all this. Well, I'm telling you because you've got to know where your money's going and how it's handled. You've got you to trust and have that lordship in your finances. But let's look at what we learned from our text here tonight. If you, if you want to open it back to that, again, that was Judges chapter 7, 9 through 22. We're going to look through. I won't read all the verses again, but we're going to just kind of hit and miss on these verses that's in that chapter. And uh, you say, how in the world you get giving out of Gideon's battle? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'm about to show you. Here in verse 9, God promises his blessings on, on Gideon. But I want to show you how God promises. And a lot of times we think, okay, God, I gave my $20. Now send me $100. i am going to sit at home until I get the check in the mail. Wouldn't it be nice not to have to work at all and just your company sends you a check at home and, and you can sit there and just go to the mailbox and pull it out. And wouldn't that be awesome? But you know what? Your company promises you that you're going to make so many dollars an hour, but you've got to be there every hour, right? If you're going to get $10 an hour, they expect you to work uh, those hours to get that $10 an hour. So tonight, I believe God promises his blessings for us. But during the night, the Lord came to Gideon, verse 9. He said, get up. I want you to go down against the camp because I'm going to give you them into your hands. So Gideon couldn't stay there and let God fight the battle. It was kind of cool the way the battle went, you know, but he couldn't just sit there. But he says, you've got to get up. Church, I want to tell you something. If we're going to build a new church, we better get up. When I mean get up, I'm talking about get up and go to the streets. Get up and worship God. Get up and pray, pray people through to the altar with the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about get up off our wallets. Come on. We got to get up. Everybody say get up. Hallelujah. You say, brother, I don't have a lot of money. Well, wouldn't it be awesome if you got up and prayed three through the Holy Ghost that did have a lot of money? I think it's time when Jesus looked at them and, and their taxes are due and they said, what are we going to do, Lord? He said, I'll tell you what you do, go fishing. How are we going to build the church? We're going to go fishing. Is that all right with everybody? Let's go fishing. 
So if I can pray somebody through the Holy Ghost, hey, I may not be able to give a $2 a week in tithes, and that may be all I make is $20 a week, but I can pray somebody through to the Holy Ghost, uh, and they can bring in what we need for the kingdom of God. Come on, that's how it's going to work. Get up. Everybody say, get up. God promises us his blessings. One of the ways he promises our blessings is through the principles of tithing. And we can go, I'm not even going to read that tonight. Everybody write down Malachi 3, 6 through 9. Go home and read it. Study it out. But if you, if you flip over to about verse number 10, uh, the Lord says, if you do all these things that I tell you and you give the principles that I'm telling you, you line up with what the word of God says. He says this. It, it, um, uh, the Lord says, I will open up the windows of heaven and I will pour out your blessing. In verse 10, he says that there will not be room enough to receive it. I want to, I want to challenge, I want the church tonight, I want to challenge you to try Malachi and see if you will not be blessed. I told a guy one time this, I said, I tell you what, my friend, if you will go and you will go in there and you will pay your tithes faithfully for three months, seek after God faithfully, don't miss, a, don't miss one ounce of it. And guess what? He could not go three months. And today, he is still financially in trouble. I think he's even been divorced since then. He, did, he don't go to church anymore. He still calls me every now and then. He tried to call me the other day. Want me to come over and eat some food? And believe it or not, I turned it down. And, uh, but yet still, he could not be focused. Church, I'm telling you, you cannot give God. But when you give right, he'll turn around and give you back some more every time. Amen? I believe the promise goes forth for those who are willing to give to the Lord. You gotta be willing. We don't have time to go into the Old Testament and I could pull out what all this means. Malachi was talking about, about the giving there, but he does, he was talking about the tenth that comes to our home. And back in the Old Testament, we know that meant uh, a tenth of everything. They brought everything to the, to the tabernacle, but I don't have time to get into that. Maybe someday Brother Blanton can get into that study for us and and i'm sure he's writing stuff down right now to do that he he's, he loves the tabernacle he's got it back there on his lap right now but but it i believe it's the first fruits that that we have to give to god now when i say first fruits god god if you're going to give to god you're going to be a giver let that be the first check that you write when you get paid out of your paycheck everybody agree with me it shouldn't be what's left over. It shouldn't be if I've got time. It shouldn't be, uh, I'm gonna send $10 to the, to the orphan place. I'm gonna send $10 here and I'm getting way ahead of my notes tonight and I'm gonna send $10 here. But he said, send it to the storehouse that you're going to, that you're gonna worship God in. So give our first fruits is, is our best, the best things we ought to give. It, it didn't belong to the children of Israel. And there were other offerings you know, expected above the tithing, as I said, through the Old Testament. And God promises to bless his children that would give. So this tonight is for you and I. This Malachi, God was speaking uh, to us through this. And if you go to the New Testament, Matthew chapter 7, 9 through 11, you can read it later, but he says that God's willing to give his children gifts. And tonight, I'm glad to be called his child. How many is glad to be called his child? I don't know about you, but I'm glad he's my father. And I'm glad he owns it all. You know, he, he is everything to us. Over and over, the principles of God, the blessings to his people, they're both, I believe they're in the New Testament and they're in the Old Testament. They're, they're all through the scriptures. We look, we look at some more scriptures here tonight. I want to show you a few things that we look, go forth. But I want to look at the second point that I want to make before I get to the scriptures. I want to read out of the New Testament and the Old uh, because there is a requirement beforehand before we receive blessings of God, there's a requirement that we have to do. Other words, so you have to get up. Other words, you have to go before the Lord. You have to be willing to make sacrifice. Blessings, I believe blessings that we get from God requires actions. And that's what he's talking about in verse nine about getting up and, against, and go against the camp. There are times when God says, I have delivered the, you, the camp into your hands. And there's times when the enemy tries to overtake us, but God comes to our rescue and he helps us and he delivers the enemy into our hands. But have you ever noticed you have to be the one willing to get up and make that move toward the victory? There's victory for all of us tonight. Now we can sit over here and let the uh, giant laugh at us, poke fun of us, Send me a man if we want to all day long and we can just sit in these four walls and say, oh my, what are we going to do? How are we going to do this? Now, y'all can disagree with this. I'm going to plug it in right here real good. Y'all can disagree with this if you want to. Uh, but I I'm not going to sit here and wait until a man comes in with a machine gun and start shooting us. I'm going to be prepared when this guy comes in. I want a pistol over here. I want two pistols over here. I want my pistol under this platform. Yeah. 
Well, Brother Hunt, don't you trust God? Well, why didn't David just say, die, giant? <laughs> he didn't, but he went to the smooth and got him five smooth stones. He got his weapon ready. He says, why are y'all letting this big guy bully you around? Come on, let's take him out. Church, we sit around too long and let the big guy bully us around. When we're living the principles that God told us to do, we're, we're living what God says to do, but we can't just send our tithes in and think God's gonna bless us, but we gotta put some action with it. We gotta get up, we gotta go into and fight against these giants that's trying to come against us. Many times we receive the blessings of God in our lives, but we must show that action in our camp that we want, and, and we want more of what God's got for us today. And I wanna show you some scriptures here uh, tonight to go along with these that I'm talking about. If we will have action, Luke 6 and 38 says this, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Shall men give unto your bosom for the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. And then in 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, I'm gonna read these real quick, but they're on the board if you wanna write them down. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bondifully shall reap also bondifully. Now we, we can give according to the scripture, the tenth of our tithe that we want to. And guess what? To me, the tenth is, is I believe, is sparingly because that, that doesn't really require the blessing. But the bondifully part is when we give beyond our, and you guys have, that's why I told the Lord, Lord, I'm preaching to people that has given beyond and it, what you could even require of. But tonight, I want to tell you, that's where our blessings come from. And that's why some of you are so blessed tonight because you've given beyond just the tenth of the tithe. And then our, our, our famous verse that we like around here, it's not Acts 2.38, what is it? Matthew 6.33, I heard one person say it. I'm thankful that I got one person tonight, praise God. We know what Matthew 6.33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. If you back up a few verses, you'll find out what all those things are. It's the things that we just cannot live without. But God takes care of those if we seek his kingdom first. Hey, it's not about my kingdom. Come on, I'm not here to build me a kingdom. Guess what? When I'm gone, the church is still going to be here. Unless God calls the church home, and that, that will be all right with me. I would say in the next year or so, if God calls us all home, I'm ready. How about y'all? But until God calls me home, guess what I got to do? I got to keep paying my tithes. I got to keep giving to God. I got to be a good steward of what God has put me over. I got to take care of it. Uh, I can't let my house fall apart because guess what? Now that I'm, I'm fixing to go home, I'm going to go home and be with God. It doesn't matter. I'm a steward until God says, okay, I'm done with you. It's time to come home. I live until the last day. Everybody say amen. amen. So Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his rights. All these things will be added. Well, how about the Old Testament? God said he'd take care of you. And them that trust in him, Isaiah 26 and 3, thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Church, we gotta keep our mind on God no matter where we're at. No matter how broke we feel we are uh, financially, broke spiritually, down spiritually because guess what we all have our up and down days i tell everybody don't feel like the long ranger when you get down because there's a lot of people that have down days but i want to promise you this i guarantee you this if you keep your mind on him guess what he will be with thee he will take care of thee he will supply your needs praise god psalms 31 19 says oh how great is thy goodness which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Then James, of course, sums it up. I didn't put this on the board, but James summed it up in 2 and 26 of James. He says, faith without works is dead. People say, well, I don't think you're saved by works. You're exactly right. You can't be saved by works, but you will, be, you will stay saved by works. Praise God. You will stay saved by works. When you're working for God and you're giving according to the scripture, you will stay saved. When we say we trust in God and then we get up and, and we go down to the enemy's camp and, and the Lord told us, he, he says, and then truly, I believe when God tells us to and we go down there and we do what God says, I believe then truly God will perform miraculous things in our life if we do according to God. But now listen, don't get ahead of God. You can get ahead of God because it looks like you can. 
Come on, we know some guys in the scriptures that thought they was gonna go down there and cast some devils out because, hey, I saw Paul do it and, and, and hey, this Jesus that Paul preaches about, we can do this. And they went down, didn't have a clue. You gotta be careful if you don't have a clue of what's going on. Just because this other man is doing good at his, what God has blessed him with and God put him a steward over this situation doesn't mean that you can do it as well because you can get yourself in a mess. But I believe our financial giving, once again, is, is I believe it can be the greatest thing that could happen in our lives. Uh, it doesn't matter whether we're, we're getting up or if we're staying down because sometimes God says, hang on, stand still, wait on the Lord. And sometimes God says, get up and go now. You know what? God even told Gideon when to do it and when, what time to do it and how to surround the city. We want 100 here, 100 here, and 100 over here. He told him exactly how to do it. Whatever you do, make sure your actions is according to what God says to do. I believe when God asks us to do something, it, it, it may always be the most, or it may not always be in a comfortable way. Because uh, there's some things I've, God has told me in the past, and I had to stand here like this message tonight. I really tried to find another message, but it seemed like every time I tried to find another message, I couldn't get my mind off of this one. And, and I began to read and study more about it, and then God just showed me. But sometimes God does things that's not a comfortable. A lot of times, I'll be honest with you, if you're comfortable, you're probably not doing nothing for God. If your life's comfortable and you, you have everything in line and everything's good, something's probably wrong because when you get busy for God and you start working for God, guess what? There's this guy with a long tail and pitchfork and big ears or whatever he has. He's coming right at you. He's knocking on your door every day. I tell people all the time, some people say, oh, Brother Hunt, the devil sure fought me this week. I just want to shout when they tell me that because you know why? He's going he's to fight you when you start doing something good. Come on. The Holy Ghost will get all over you, Brother Abbott, but the next day the devil may come knocking and say, you didn't really feel nothing. You acted crazy. You shouldn't act like that. But that's when we ought to look at him and say, get thee behind me, Satan, and go ahead and have us another Holy Ghost party. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we ought to do. So I believe our actions are to be designed by God. Don't, don't do it yourself, but let it be designed by God. When God asks us to do something, let, let's do it the way he wants. And it may not be too comfortable, but you know, he told the leper, he said, you go down and dip in the water seven times in the Jordan River. Did it work? Yes. Was it comfortable for him to go down? I mean, he was a man of honor. He had, he had was a great status of his life. It, well, was it comfortable? No, it wasn't comfortable. Did God move? Yes. Did the man like it? Did Naaman like going dipping in the mud? No. But guess what? Somebody convinced him and said, if you do it, you're going to be healed. Church, I'm telling you tonight, is it always easy to pay tithes? No. It's not always easy to pay tithes. There's been a lot of times that I could have took that let tithe and I could have paid an extra bill or paid an extra note or, or just paid my light bill maybe, you know? And there's been many times that it was so tight and it was, it just, I didn't know how I was gonna make it. My wife would call MLG robbery and say, hey, can we pay, can we pay, uh, half the bill next month. I promise you, I'll pay it on such and such date so we can keep up. There's been times, hey, it's been like that sometimes since I've been pastoring. But I knew we had to give what was right. It's not easy. It's not easy to give what's right sometimes. But when we do it with a good attitude, everybody say good attitude. And knowing that God, this is what God requires. And it goes back uh, to wanting the credit. It's not, not man. It's not for me. I don't want the credit. I'm doing it because God has gave me 100%. And all he asks back is 10%. Sometimes God takes us to uh, ask us to do something that's not real comfortable. And, and, and a lot of times it is in things in giving. Uh, I've heard testimonies. Some of you have told me before that, that God blessed you and you had this certain amount of money in your pocket and, and they took up a special offer that night. You was trying to save up that money. Somebody just told me the other day about uh, uh, the preacher that was preaching. He said, or somebody was saying, I forgot where I heard it from, but I've heard so much preaching the last few weeks. But he said that uh, he has saved up $400, take his wife somewhere nice. I forgot who told me that the other day. And, and they took up offering in that service and he gave that $400. It might have been one of you guys here. And, and, and his wife didn't, was, didn't like it too well, but God turned around and blessed them tremendously down the line. So sometimes God will ask you to give uncomfortably. Sometimes God is going to ask you to give out of your savings. Sometimes he's going to ask you to dump your saving out. Let me ask you tonight, if God asked you to dump your savings out tonight, what would be your answer? And your first, well, I just read some of your minds. Well, it have to be God. <laughs> and some of you just said, well, I don't think I can do that. Well, see, sometimes God asks us to do the uncomfortable things. The enemy tries every rational thing in the book 
to, to, I think, to confound what God, our, our obedience and our effort. He wants everything he can do to make that, our obedience to turn against what God really wants. I mean, I wrote some of these down that I, I know you've heard and I've heard. I've heard people say, well, I can't afford it. If I had more, I would. And I disagree with that. If they won't tithe on $200, they won't tithe on $2 million. I already tithe just in my own standard, in my own way. I'm so far behind, I don't know where to start. I like to spread my tithe out. I like to put a little here, a little there, a little over there. And, but see, I'm here to tell you, don't listen to these lies that are trying to come against us. If God is in it, he will help you to be obedient to him. And I believe tonight what I'm preaching to you, God is in it. Hey, I'm not, I'm not preaching this message tonight to get you to give a big offering because you are givers tonight. But I'm coming tonight to encourage you to tell you this. If you give it, God will bless you. If you give according to the scripture, not only according to the scripture, because sometimes God may come in the middle of the night and say, hey, I want you to give half of what this is that you've got in your, your bank account or, or give all. And I don't know about you, but sometimes I, I'll probably have to roll over and say, speak again, Lord. <laughs> and I might look at Sister Hunt, did you hear that? I want to make sure it's two of us heard. But you see, sometimes it's easy to hear God when he says, somebody's fixing to give you $2,000. Yes, Lord, I'm looking for it, God. You know what I'm saying tonight. But when we learn to listen to God instead of these lies, I promise you, if you're obedient to God, well, Brother Hunt, is it going to be easy? No, it's not going to be easy. I'm going to tell you a little, another little story tonight. A mother wanted to teach her daughter some moral lessons. And so she gave her little daughter a quarter and a dollar for church. She looks over to daughter. She says, I tell you what I want you to do. I'm going to give you a quarter and a dollar. And I want you to put the one in the plate that you feel like God wants you to give. And so the offering man came around and, and after church, the mom asked her, says, well, which one did you give, honey? She said, well, mama, I gave the quarter. And she looked at the baby. She says, well, why did you just give the quarter? She said, because right before they took the offering, I heard the preacher say, be a cheerful giver. And she says, I just knew that I would be more cheerful giver if I can keep my dollar. <laughs> so is it easy tithing? No. But listen closely to this last point that I want to bring home to us tonight. God designs, and I believe uh, he also empowers. He empowers us. When, with, with 300 men of trumpets surrounded, and the Lord calls these men throughout the camp to turn each, each one that was inside the camp uh, to turn on their swords, and they, they won that battle. God calls us, I believe he calls us, to be a cheerful giver. He would never cause us to do something that he's, he's not going to empower us to do. When he wrote that and told the man of God, Malachi, to write this down, this is what I want the people to hear. He knew that we were in power to do what he was writing. Church, he will not put no more on us than we can stand. And if we learn to do what God has empowered us to do, I'm gonna tell you, there's not enough devils in hell to stop what God wants to do in Carville, Tennessee. Not enough, not enough. And I believe God wants us to be cheerful givers. He never calls us to do something that he won't empower us to complete. Does this mean if we tithe, we'll never have to, sacri uh, have to sacrificially or, or financially have problems? No, it doesn't mean that. In fact, uh, I believe when, when we sacrifice greatly, ful fulfill what uh, he's asking us to do. You know, you know what I'm talking about. The, uh, this is okay. It's good for us to deny self every once in the, now and then. We have to deny ourselves in order for the kingdom to be built. How many knows the, uh, he says, he says uh, uh, if you increase... He's going to, or if we decrease, he's going to increase. But how many really would be willing to, to uh, decrease tonight in everything you got for the kingdom to increase? I want you to think about it before you raise your hand. Because are you really willing to, to step down from everything you're doing and just increase to see God do the decrease in the church house? Would you be willing or would you say, well, in according, if I can have it the way I want it? No, church, we got to be willing to decrease so God can increase tonight. And I'm getting ready to close tonight, but hear me closely. we got to hear what God wants us to do. Uh, 
I, I believe we're in a point today that God wants to empower us. It doesn't mean when he empowers us, it doesn't mean that when I start paying my tithes that God's gonna put a money tree in my front yard and I can just go out and pluck money off when I want it. No, that's not what it means. But tithing is a principle. If we do it correctly, according to Malachi, uh, where we read a moment ago, and do the 10%, guess what? That's just our reasonable service. It's our reasonable service. It has nothing to do with the gratitude of what's done for us. You know, a lot of times we pay tithes looking for a blessing. That's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to pay tithes thanking God that he only let, he let us keep the 90%. Amen. But in this case, we find as you go through the scripture, you'll find that God always took care. Elijah was there and there was always just enough oil and a just enough flour. God took care of them and God began to do blessings in their life. And I want to close with one more story tonight. I couldn't, I couldn't quit reading these things today of, of how God blesses people, but this is supposed to be a true story from a missionary. There was a knock on the door of the hut occupied by the missionary in Africa. Answering the missionary, he found one of the native boys holding a large fish in his hand. And the boy said, Reverend, you told us about tithing. So here, I, I have brought you my, my tenth. And the missionary greatly took the big fish and he questioned the young lad. He says, is there tithe? if this is your tithe, where's the other nine fish? And at this, the boy beamed at the, and he said, beamed back at the missionary in his eyes and he said, oh, they're still back there in the lake. I just gotta go catch them now. <laughs> now that's faith right there. He didn't have it, but he says, you know, you taught me that, you know what, tonight, oh my goodness, I, I've heard stories like this. A man was making two or $300 a week and he started paying his tithes. Somebody talked him paying his tithes. And he says, you know what, if God's gonna bless me on paying $20 for 200, I think I'm gonna pay 40 out of 200. And guess what happened? He started making $400 a week. And then after that, he says, if God's gonna bless me that, I'm gonna start paying $80 out of 400. God started blessing $800 a week. And before it was over, he was a, a millionaire because he began to work for God and, and he realized you can't outgive God. But I want to ask you tonight, and, and, and I want to say this in, in, in closing tonight. You guys know I don't go look at the books, see who's paid tithes this week, who hadn't paid them this week. I, once a year I sign you guys paper and I give you the paper out. But now we are here next, maybe in the beginning of next month, we're going to try our best to have a half of the year layout for you guys so you can see where you're at on your giving for your building fund and, and what you've given in tithes this year. Try to maybe that'll help you out, know where you're at in the year already. Gonna to try to have it ready for you. But, but, but I'm not here to say that I know who gives and who don't give. Because guess what? It's not really my, my job to come over with a whip and say, hey, you ain't gave today. Pop, give me some more money. No, it's, it's if we're giving it from our heart, giving it with the right attitude, that's what counts from God. And we gotta do that with all of our heart. We learn lordship and trust from Gideon. We also learn four principles we can put in our area of stewardship especially the area of financing giving and when we give to the Lord. But listen, listen what I'm hit, I told you tonight. God promises his blessings. Blessings require actions. Actions are designed by God. What God designed, he also empowers. If you put those four things I'm showing you tonight, you will be a blessed person. Your family will be blessed. Hey, it's not how much you pay. I, I, I've had people feel kind of bad because they couldn't give beyond what they it was given because this is all I'm making right now. That's not what I'm talking about. If it's two mites, if that's all you got, my friend, and God sees your heart, guess what? It's just as much as the biggest giver in the church. So that's where I'm at tonight. But I want to ask you these questions in closing. Maybe you ought to ask yourself the question, have I been doing giving right? Or have I been robbing God? What is God speaking to me? Have I been obedient to Him? Have you been trusting God enough to tithe? Ask yourself, do I really trust God enough to give even though I got a light bill due next week and this is my last little bit? Really and truly, that, that tithe should already been gone out of your checking account. Think about it. You shouldn't have been worried about that. If anything, if anything, it should be between your cable bill and light bill. Do I want to keep my cable or my light bill? Everybody with me tonight? Do I want to keep my two car notes or my light bill? Do I want to keep my wine in the freezer or my light bill? <laughs> we can name stuff all night long. Do I want to keep my activities that I like or my light bill? Brother Terry, I even sold my motorcycle one time. <laughs> uh, 
I knew he was going to go there on me. But I did because I realized that I couldn't quit paying my tithes, but I needed extra money to pay down on my wife's house, and, and I knew I had to get rid of So sometimes you have to get rid of some things to make sure you're on the right avenue with God. But how willing are we, how much are we willing? You say, brother, you asked me to sell all my stuff now. And no, no, no. I believe that if you put tithing first, everybody say first. First, before God. And just give it, give it according to the scripture. It will work all the time. Somebody looked at me and says, well, I just can't afford to pay tithes. Well, friend, my answer to you is this. You cannot afford not to pay tithes. Has anybody, anybody... Everybody, anybody know where I'm coming from tonight? How blessed God has blessed you? Has it been tough paying tithes sometimes? Oh yeah, it's been tough. Some of you have given beyond measure this year because we're paying this building off. And guess what? We're gonna still pay it off next month. Give your hand, yourself a hand clap. I don't have to go into detail who did what or what did what, but I will tell you this. We have people here tonight that's on fixed income that has given more than I've ever seen anybody give hardly. In their, in the, if you want to, I'm not talking about amount again. I'm talking about from their, their bank account. You don't see a lot of people give according to the way some of you have given tonight. And God's going to bless you for it. But can I tell you this, with, from a loving heart tonight, you've got to give consistently. It can't be just in a, a little here, a little there, and a little over there. You've got to give according to how God lays it into your household. Come on. I've seen people, they want to give it on third Sunday of the month, and that's all I'm going to give, just a little bit, then I catch up later. Don't, don't play the catch-up game because it's hard to catch up once you get behind. If anything, catch up on the cable bill. You know, they, somebody told me not too long ago that, that uh, they had a good uh, fundraiser in their church. They said, I tell you what we're going to give every month for the next 18 months. I just want you to give what your cable and telephone costs for the next 18 months. And they said they raised a lot of money. Do y'all realize if you pay $35 to $85 a, a month with cable, you realize how much that's, that, that would equal up for God's kingdom? Is anybody with me tonight or y'all want me to quit and go home? Y'all see where I'm coming from? If we can line up with God, God will take care of all the rest. It's a, it's a proven fact over and over and over. Everybody else, Brother Patton, have to go up on taxes to keep things running. Taxes have to keep going up to get the more things. But you know what? God hasn't changed his plan. And it still works. The 10% and offerings, and it never went wrong with what God gives. I know one preacher that preaches it like this. I'm not brave enough to do it yet, but he says that he believes that you ought to pay 15%. Right off the top. That way it takes care of your tithes and offering. Then you have it covered. Now, y'all take it how you want, but it would cover it, wouldn't it? Praise the Lord. And some of you even do more than that. But would you stand with me tonight? I'm going to close and run out the side door tonight. Praise the Lord. <laughs> not really. I'm not scared to preach God's word. But it's a guaranteed thing to work. If I had time tonight, I could start pulling people out of the congregation and say, would you testify to this congregation how God's blessed you? And how God has kept you. And you would hear testimony after testimony how God has took care of people. And how, man, I used, to, I used to live here and God's blessed me and moved me up here. And God's done this avenue. He's put me in this and put me in that. And I'm going to tell you this. If you follow after man, follow after flesh, you'll fall. But if you follow after God, you'll make it. Amen. Don't follow after the pastor. Don't follow after me because I'm good looking and all. Because you'll fall. But follow after Jesus. His principles. You can't go wrong with his principles. Look at your neighbor and say, I can do better. I can do better according. I'm not just talking about just money tonight, but I'm talking about the steward that God has made me in my life. How do I take care of the things in my life? Am I taking care of what God has given me? Am I and I'm blessed, but what is God? Is he going to give me more? Yes, he is. If we keep his principles going. Would you come to the night? Let's come around the altar and let's pray together. God, help me to be a better steward. Help me to be what you want me to be, God. I trust you, God, enough to tithe in my life. Not only my money, but my time and my, my things that you've given me, God, that I can be a blessing with. Lord, help me to be a better steward in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, worship you.
Let's just worship the Lord a minute tonight. God, I want to live for you, Jesus. Come on, I want you to ask the Lord while you're in this altar. God, is there anything that I need to do better? God, am I in the right line, in your line that you want me to be? God, I want to know I'm right, God. Lord, I don't want to be just halfway, God, and miss you, Lord. Come on, would you ask him that tonight, God? Make sure I'm in the right direction. Am I lined up with your word? Oh, Lord. I pray you help me line up to where I need to be, God. In Jesus' name, I thank you for it. Sing it to him, Lord. Sing it. Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm awake. Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah. Let's raise our hands and thank the Lord tonight. God, I love you, Jesus. Thank you for this day you've given us, Lord. Thank you for this service tonight. We pray you'll be a blessing to us tremendously tonight. In Jesus' name, hallelujah.